Hey, what's up? Uh, so uh, it's Tuesday, and I'm Jen. I'm <laughs> I'm Andrea, and uh, this is Jennifer Chat. So welcome, welcome to Jennifer Chat. Uh, okay, so um, yeah. So last week uh, we had a cool topic about a day in the life, and I totally missed it because I wasn't feeling all that great. And then I also tried to make some clips, but it was kind of they all they were mostly indoors, and then I tried to get a camera, and I couldn't find one that was cheap enough. And I thought they would have it at the store, and I went on this walk and came back, but they uh, they didn't have the the cameras that I was looking for. They were all like really expensive. So yeah, I thought I wouldn't, you know, it, it would be a lot of work to mash together a few clips of myself inside doing things that no one would care about. So. I didn't end up getting to one, so I apologize for that, but um, I thought that uh, other people's videos were really cool. It was nice to see uh, what y'all are up to, <laughs> um, and I, th I think we had a lot of sickness and things like that and busyness last week as well, so um, yeah, but hopefully this week we'll get, get back into things, so um, yeah, just a little bit of a precursory thing. Um, so how are you guys? been a while. <laughs> I feel like it's been a long time because I missed one for the first time last week. Um, yeah, we got a good hot pick this week though, and I think I can address it. Um, I've been feeling kind of sick and a little bit shitty, so if uh, if you can't understand me, I apologize. If my voice or anything gets all weird, it's probably because I'm kind of sick. So, Anyways, onwards with the topic. It's a good one. Um, so, uh, the topic this week is, have you noticed any groups or subgroups within the queer community uh, that have received unfair treatment, uh, oppression, or misrepresentation? Um, and have you experienced uh, such treatment yourself for any aspect of your life experience, like gender, sexuality, appearance, or race? Um, and how do you think we could deal with these issues at a personal and or social level? Uh, and then the bonus is, are you afraid of heights? <laughs> um, yes, so very good question. Um, so I think that, uh, I, oops, sorry. <laughs> I think that um, I, would, I would reflect what, what Matt was saying in their video. It's a very good video. Um, I totally recommend watching that, obviously. Uh, yeah, so I, w I would um, I would agree with um, the idea that if we look at things in terms of the LGBT acronym, I think in general, uh, unfortunately, as one moves towards the invisible letters that are on the end of that acronym, um, we find that uh, the people that are part of those groups are less represented uh, or less known about, um, and maybe misrepresented and oppressed and things like that, um, and just generally have less of a kind of voice or less people that will listen to them or be able to understand them, um, or support and things like that, which is really very unfortunate. Um, so yeah, I think I came up with a kind of list, although I didn't write it down, so hopefully I'll remember all the things I was going to say for, for groups that face oppressions and such. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, uh, an obvious one, I guess, is, um, genderqueer people, so, um, yeah, I think that I'd, I'd like to kind of ex expand that out or use different terminology as, as far as this goes, um, which would just be gender variancy, or just gender variance, um, so I think that, that, um, sexuality is kind of focused on sort of heavily in um, the LGBT community or in the queer community, if you will. Um, and sexuality is usually kind of a focus and a an, um, sort of important thing somehow, and that's what a lot of stuff is centered around, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sort of, um, it's difficult to to navigate very real and potentially quite important to oneself um, uh, issues and things like gender, uh, and then 
to have that not necessarily be represented or understood at all by um by other so even some other groups within queer community because it's quite the vast and diverse community um or communities so yeah um yeah so i, I think the the kind of the the way that general prejudice and stuff seems to go is kind of um male-bodied white upper and middle class people get the most kind of privilege essentially and that doesn't mean that all people that are kind of um white and male-bodied will receive a bunch of privilege but generally if they're white male-bodied and um and red as such and kind of and that's how they identify and things like uh things like that they will generally receive the most kind of um potentially accolades for nothing or for horrible things or um things like that you know and uh and that shit kind of sucks so i think sometimes it's good to analyze this sort of stuff so that we can understand how people get variously screwed over um you know like the pedestaling of um of male people um is completely unnecessary and ends up kind of being I think inherently misogynistic and just generally kind of um demeaning to to people who aren't that and there are various things which are pedestaled and sex is also usually pedestaled in uh in this culture so um in the culture that I find myself in so uh yeah I think that it's important to some extent to look at what's pedestaled what's idealized and things like that um and that can let us know um more about what goes on as far as like um how how prejudices kind of trickle down from that i guess that's that's sort of how i look at it in one in one way um uh that's that's one way of looking at it well hi this is an intermission because um my video was really long <laughs> So, you should totally check out the second half of this video. I'm having a toast break and I thought I would make this clip so that you can specifically feel like, hey, what the fuck, the video cut off now. And um, it's because it was really long. So, I made a second half, there's totally a second half, and it's probably called part two, so you should check it out. All right, take care.